What's up traders and welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about treasury yields. We're gonna be talking about the yield curve, real yields and maturity spreads. Now, these bits of the macroeconomic puzzle have a broad range of implications and uses for us as investors and traders. But specifically in this video, we're gonna be talking about the treasury yields and what that tells us about the general attractiveness of fixed income. And we're also gonna take a look at what maturity spreads tell us about investors' perceptions of risk along different time frames. So without further ado, let's jump in and learn a little bit more about treasury yields. So let us begin with a brief overview of treasury yields. So when the US government seeks to raise additional capital to do things like invest in new infrastructure or develop new projects of any sort, one of the options that they have is to create new bonds. And when the US government creates bonds, they're known as treasuries. When investors purchase these treasuries, these US government issued bonds, they're essentially loaning the government money. And in return, they're receiving an interest payment. That's known as the bond coupon. And this isn't necessarily a video on bond basics. So the key takeaway here is that US treasuries are essentially just US government issued bonds. There are several different names for US treasuries depending on their length to maturity. Length of maturity sounds like some fancy concept, but really that just means how long until the bond must be paid back. Or said another way, how long until the principal of the loan comes due, right? So a US treasury that matures in less than two years is known as a T-bill. A treasury maturing between two and 10 years is generally referred to as a T-note. And those treasuries maturing in greater than 10 years are generally referred to as T-bonds, treasury bonds. So understand that there are different classifications for these US treasuries based on their length to maturity. So when I say treasuries broadly, I'm just referring to any bond that's issued by the US government. Why does it matter to classify these things based on you know their length to maturity? Well, that's a great question. And that's exactly what's at the foundation of this whole concept of the yield curve and maturity spreads. And it comes down to the fact that with differing time frames comes different levels of risk. Think about it, you can forecast what's likely to happen in the next week with a lot more accuracy than you can forecast what's likely to happen over the next year or 10 years or 100 years. So the more time involved with anything, the broader the range of outcomes. And that in and of itself is what risk is, right? It's a broader range of outcomes yet to be determined. So with greater time comes a greater range of possible outcomes, implies greater risk. So whenever there's more risk involved with something, investors need to be compensated for that increased risk with higher rates of return. And this brings us to the whole concept of yield. Yield is the annualized rate of return that an investor stands to profit when they purchase a US treasury or any asset for that matter. So more time inherently creates more risk. So when you're comparing the same investment, in this case, US treasuries, but you're looking at that same investment along different time frames, the longer time frame should have higher yields associated with it. So a three month US treasury and a 30 year US treasury are essentially the exact same thing. The only difference being the time involved. And that's what the yield curve is. It's the difference in the yield on the same investment across different times. So so when we're talking about treasury yields and the yield curve, we're talking about the difference between the yield on US treasuries of varying maturities. The yield curve itself is just a snapshot in time of the yields on various US treasuries. So typically you see yields increasing as length to maturity increases. And when that's the case, it's known as a normal yield curve. And that's typically the case. So you'd expect that treasuries with longer maturities would always have higher yields than treasuries of shorter maturities. And in theory, that's exactly what should happen. But in practice, time is not the only risk factor. There are thousands of risk factors, none of which actually drives yields. Yields are driven by supply and demand. So obviously the US government is on the supply side of that equation, but on the demand side, 
side of that equation is investors, right? Investors are only going to invest in things that are attractively priced. So if collectively investors are perceiving more risk associated with US treasuries, demand for those treasuries is going to go down. It's going to push the price of those treasuries down until such time that they're attractive enough to boost demand once again. Now again, bond prices and bond yields have an inverse correlation. So as bond prices go down, their yields go up. All of that is kind of a lengthy way of saying something rather simple. Whenever investors perceive more risk, yields are gonna go up. Whenever they perceive less risk, yields are gonna go down. In particular, we can get an idea of the relative levels of risk that investors expect over given time frames, right? So if the yield on the three month T-bills is going up, while the yield on 30 year treasury bonds is going down, that tells us that investors are perceiving more risk in the short term than they are in the long term. And that's really at the core of this whole idea of the yield curve and of maturity spreads is how are these things trending relative to each other? So let's consider a few examples of changes in the relative values of yields along the yield curve and what these changes imply to us about investors' perceptions of risk risk and the economic outlook moving forward. So when the yield curve is steepening, that just means that the yields on longer term treasuries are increasing relative to shorter term yields. When the yield curve steepens, it indicates stronger economic activity and rising inflation expectations moving forward. When the economy performs well, it typically leads to periods of rising inflation. Rising inflation necessitates higher interest rates to rein in that inflation. So when you see the long end of the yield curve increasing relative to the short end of the yield curve, it's generally a sign that the market is optimistic about future economic conditions. A flattening yield curve, on the other hand, is just the opposite of that. It refers to times when the short end of the yield curve is increasing relative to the long end of the yield curve, resulting in a flattening of the yield curve itself. So a flattening yield curve typically indicates expectations for economic weakness, low levels of inflation, and lower interest rates moving forward. Occasionally, this goes to an extreme, and shorter-term yields can actually exceed longer-term yields. This is known as an inverted yield curve. More often than not, when the yield curve inverts in this way, it's a warning sign that there's an impending recession in the U.S. economy, usually within the next 6 to 18 months. So that in a nutshell is the yield curve. Granted, we're taking kind of a one dimensional approach to it. We're using it to determine, you know, what investors expectations are moving forward. So let's hop into the market barometer and take a look at the current setup of the yield curve and what that's telling us about investor expectations. So here we are in the macro section of the market barometer. This is the U.S. Treasury's maturity spreads tab. The topmost chart here, we're looking at Treasury yields going through time. We're going back about 50 years here. So I wanted to give you guys a bird's eye view of how these things have trended over time. Now, we are focusing on the short-term implications of fluctuations of the relative positioning of treasury yields. Just know that there are much broader implications about the long-term trend and the absolute values of yields. I mean, if you look back to the 80s there, you can see that yields were much higher all across the yield curve at that time. It's not because investors perceived that there was that much more risk then relative to now. There are a ton of other factors that play into the overall absolute value of yields. But again, we're focusing on the short term fluctuations and what that tells us about investors perceptions so zooming into the shorter term here we'll just look at 2020 year to date uh, it's December 11th today, so we're looking at most of the year 2020. And the topmost chart here isn't the yield curve itself. The yield curve is just a snapshot of the relative position of the yields of various maturities at one point in time. What we're looking at here is the yields in the various lengths of maturities trending through time. So zooming in our chart here, you can see uh, the very small red line at the very bottom there. That's the three-month treasury bill. The white line above that is the two-year treasury, so on and so forth, all the way out to the 30 year treasury bond which is in red at the very top so if you want to see the yield curve as it was at any point in time just hover over that data point and it'll tell you in the tooltip so if we hover over the last data point here we get our tooltip with the three month two year five year ten year thirty year yields and what you want to see is that number getting bigger the further out
out in time you get. If that's the case, then you know you're in a normal yield curve environment. And that is the case right now. So anytime that you see any of these lines crossing over each other, that's indicating to us that, you know, the yield curve is inverting. So back here in April 2020 or so, you see the three month T-bill crossing above the two year T-bill, indicating an inversion at that time with the three month yield at 26 basis points and the two year yield at 25 basis points. We actually had a yield curve inversion in 2019, several months before that as well. And sure enough, we ended up getting a recession within six to 18 months of that um, that arguably was sped up by the coronavirus pandemic but we got a recession nonetheless so interesting to note and that's what you want to be looking for on this treasury yields chart is times where these lines are getting closer together indicating a narrowing or flattening of the yield curve and any time that these lines cross over each other indicating some sort of inversion and that's why I like to use this treasury yields chart as opposed to looking at the yield curve itself because the yield curve is limited in that it's just a snapshot of the relative positions of the yields of different maturities at a you know at a moment in time whereas the treasury yield chart here shows us how those yields have trended through time and how they're moving relative to each other so when these lines get narrower when they get closer together that means that there's a narrowing or flattening of the yield curve Similarly, when these lines grow further apart through time, that indicates a widening or steepening of the yield curve, right? And so that brings us to the whole concept of maturity spreads. Maturity spreads look specifically at the difference between yields of treasuries of varying lengths to maturity. So really maturity spreads just make it a lot easier to visualize the changing difference between the yields on two different points of the yield curve, right? So for example, hopping back into the market barometer here, uh, in the bottom middle chart, we have the 10 year minus the three month treasury yield spread. What that's doing is just taking the 10 year yield minus the three month yield at different points in time and then charting that difference charting the spread between them right so whenever this chart is moving up it indicates that the 10 year yield is increasing relative to the three month yield telling us that there's a widening or steepening of the yield curve between the three month and 10 year time frames Conversely, whenever this chart moves down, it means that the three month is increasing relative to the 10 year, telling us that the short end of the yield curve is increasing, indicating a flattening of the yield curve or a narrowing of the yield curve. Similarly, in the bottom right, we have the 10 year minus the two year yield spread. This is probably the most popular and most tracked maturity spread. But same thing here where it just tracks the difference between the 10 year and two year yields through time. So how do we use the 10 year minus three month and the 10 year minus two year spreads as investors and traders? Well, whenever these things are slowly trending up, that's a good sign because it means that there's steepening or widening of the yield curve and indicates expectations for favorable economic conditions. Conversely, whenever this is slowly moving down, it indicates a narrowing of the yield curve, a flattening of the yield curve and tells us that expectations for economic conditions moving forward are deteriorating. It's also interesting to note sudden and aggressive moves higher and lower in these spreads because that indicates a sudden and dramatic shift in investor expectations. And that was exactly the case in March 2020 around the time of the coronavirus pandemic fallout. You can see the 10 minus 3 and 10 minus 2 really declining into March and then shifting completely the other direction and moving up higher higher really fast. So that initial swift decline moving into March, letting us know that investors were becoming very fearful about the short term economic outlook. So the yield went a lot higher on three months relative to 10 months and in fact turned negative, a yield curve inversion between the 10 year and three month at that point. Right after that, it turns back around. Things started to look better. Fiscal stimulus was introduced, so on and so forth. So investors' expectations went completely the other way, where they started to feel much better about the situation, especially relative to where it had just been. So treasury yields and yield spreads really help us to tap into the mentality and the expectations of investors and the market as a whole. Lastly, let's talk about real yields. 
Now, real yields are the same treasury yields that we were talking about earlier after being adjusted for the erosive effects of inflation. So where our primary focus with treasury yields, the yield curve and maturity spreads is to tap into the expectations of investors and the market, real yields is gonna be more of a measure of the overall attractiveness of fixed income investments. So for simplicity's sake, a fixed income investment is just any investment that offers a steady income stream. So generally an investment that has some sort of interest rate tied to it. So US treasuries and other bonds are examples of fixed income. So obviously fixed income investments are extremely sensitive to overall interest rates. What's more is that the attractiveness of fixed income investments is gonna be highly sensitive to inflation. Why is that exactly? Well, consider a situation where maybe you're earning a 1% yield for a, an investment in a 30-year treasury bond. But over that same year, inflation rises at 2%. So you actually lose 1% on your investment as far as the real purchasing power of your investing dollars over that time. So the lower that real yields are, the less attractive that fixed income investments as a whole are. And when real yields are negative, you actually lose purchasing power. So once more, jumping into the market barometer, and in the bottom left-hand corner, we have the real yields. And in fact, you can see that right now, real yields across the yield curve are all negative. Now this has mostly to do with the fact that overall yields are incredibly low right now, and that's an entire other conversation as to why yields are so low on an absolute value basis. But what this is telling us is that right now, fixed income is not nearly as attractive. Due to the fact that prevailing interest rates are so low, real yields on US treasuries are all negative. You'd be able to find yields in excess of inflation in corporate bonds or riskier bonds, but as far as the super safe, virtually risk-free investments in US treasuries, there's no money to be made in that right now. And we barely have any inflation right now. It's starting to turn up a little bit in some places, but you know that's really a testament to how low overall yields really are right now. So once again, real yields just give us an indication of the overall attractiveness of fixed income investments in the context of prevailing interest rates and current rates of inflation. So there it is, gang, a quick look, an introduction into treasury yields, the yield curve, maturity spreads and real yields and how we use these things to gauge investor expectations about the u.s economic outlook as well as the overall attractiveness of fixed income investments so if you guys like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel hit that like button leave any questions or comments down below for now i'm your host neil thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys in the next video